Hi, welcome back to Mr. Mentis' ELL Classroom. In this lesson, we are going to be continuing our study of Chapter 5 of the Blue Book, which uh, covers a lot of adjectives for comparing and contrasting people. Okay, so, for this exercise, you're going to need uh, three pages that you can find in the description of the YouTube video. I want you to print all three if you are able. So print this one. This is page 38. This one, this is page 39. And this one, this is activity 28. Okay? We're going to write on all of those. As always, if you do not have access to a printer, just pull them up so you can read them and write the answers on a sheet of paper. Uh, I do want you to participate in all of these lessons, whether you have a printer or not. All right, so let's look at our textbook. First thing we're doing, we're going to see at the top, is we have one of these blue boxes that they like to give us to help sort of map out a grammar rule. And the first thing we're going to notice is, again, we have our favorite three words, am, is, and are, the forms of the verb to be, probably the most commonly used verb in the English language and one of the most confusing, because that's just how English rolls. Um, so, this should look pretty similar, only uh, now we're using it together with one of the adjectives to describe uh, that we have just been practicing in this chapter. So, for example, they're going to say, am I tall? Is he tall? Is she tall? Is it tall? So, again, this is similar to what we've been doing for a while. When we changed I to he, we had to change am to is. Am I, is he, okay? Same thing over here. If we change it to we, suddenly we have to change is now to are. Are we tall? Are you tall? Are they tall? So as you're practicing speaking your English, you have to remember to use the correct word am, is, or are, while you're talking about your subjects. All right, now our answers. Pretty much the same thing. You can see, if it ch uh, we're, we're going to change what verb we use, am, is, or are, depending on what pronoun we use. I, he, she, whatever. Remember, these are pronouns. We went over this. We talked about it. Um, so, yes, I am. Yes, he is. Yes, she is. Yes, it is. Yes, we are. Yes, you are. Yes, they are. And the bottom line here is I don't want you to be saying things like, yes, they is. Okay? We should be able to catch ourselves because we've been practicing that. Okay? We don't say, yes, I is. No. Yes, I am. Match the correct verb to the correct noun or pronoun. Okay, and now we have our negatives. No, I'm not. I'm, of course, means I am. No, he isn't. No, she isn't. No, it isn't. No, we aren't. No, you aren't. No, they aren't. So, again, we've practiced this a few times before, so I don't think we need to go over it too much. Just notice, isn't, make sure you remember your apostrophe, and aren't. And notice up here, there's no word for am not. It's not amped. There's, there's no word for that. We just don't say that. You can say I'm not, but you can't say I amped the way you can say I isn't. That's just, that's not a word. It's one of those weird things about English. So pay attention to that at am. All right, that's the groundwork. Let's see this model conversation that we're going to be using in this exercise. Okay? Okay, so we have two people talking. And we're going to be asking questions, and we're going to answer the questions by saying no. And then we're going to say what the correct answer is. So like over here it says, are you married? And then she says, no, I'm not. I'm single. Okay? Notice that we had 
two different sentences here. No, I'm not, period. It's kind of hard to see the period there. I'm single, period. Two sentences. That's what I want from you. Two sentences, okay? Next. Tell me about your new car. Is it large? No, it isn't, period. It's small, period. Okay? So see again, two sentences. First say no, then say what the correct answer is. Tell me about your new neighbors. Are they quiet? No, they aren't, period. They're noisy, period. And make sure you spell their correctly. Remember, we have many versions of that word. Good. We feel like we understand what we're doing here? Okay. So, let's go on. Now you have this, which hopefully you've printed out at home. And we're going to use this. Again, this used to be a speaking exercise. But because I had to change the format of these classes, this is now a writing exercise. It's going to get you lots of good writing practice. So, tell me about your, your computer. Blank new? What goes in the blank, do you think? It's going to be, is it new? The computer is it. Okay? Is it new? No, it isn't. It's old. Okay? Understand what we're doing? We're going to use our opposite practice. And now we're going to use some more complete sentences also. So I want you to write the answer into the spaces. Fill in all the missing uh, words. And by the way, this is not just one word. There's a lot of words that go in here. So don't be confused and think this is just like one word per space. That's not how it works. You can fit a whole sentence in here. Okay? For each one of these, fill in the missing section and then answer it with two sentences, okay? Just like we did up here. So each one of these conversations should look a lot like these conversations, okay? Finish this one, and then do the next page, page 39, okay? Once you're done with that, come back to me, and I will tell you what the correct answer should be. You'll have to listen closely to what I say and make sure it matches what you wrote, okay? All right. So, pause the video now and fill in the, the activity. When you're done, unpause it, come back to me, and I will walk you through the answers. <sighs> I'm going to take this opportunity to have a nice cup of coffee. That's something that's the same, right? We have continuity, something that continues. The exact same coffee mug that I used to bring into class every day. Still bringing it. Brings back memories, huh? Okay. Did you pause the video and fill out uh, the activity? Okay, good. Let's go over. Okay, so going back to part two. So, tell me about your new boss. Is he... Young. Okay. Is he young? No, he isn't. He's old. Although, I mean, he doesn't look that old, does he? I, I, I don't know. He might, he might be mad about that. Like I said, this whole chapter is kind of rude. The book is rude to these people, don't you think? Calling him old. Um, next. Okay. Tell me about your brother. Is he tall? No, he isn't. He's short. Okay. Make sure you're spelling that correctly. He's should be spelled H-E apostrophe S, okay? It doesn't look like I have an example of that. I thought I did. But H-E apostrophe S. Don't forget your apostrophe. 
Tell me about your sister. Is she single? Is she single? No, she isn't. She's married. Make sure you have that apostrophe S. So I don't want to hear that you wrote she married. We don't do that. That's not, not an English class. She's married. Okay? Number seven. Tell me about Nancy's cat. Is it pretty? No, it isn't. It's ugly. And remember, when we're talking about animals, we're supposed to say it. Okay? I know that a lot of the time we end up saying he or she when we're talking about a cat, but the correct grammar, the correct English rule, is that you're supposed to talk, talk about your animal and say it's it. So don't say he's pretty. Say it's it. Okay? Number eight. Tell me about Ron and Betty's dog. Is it little? Again, remember to use it, not he. It. No, it isn't. It's big. Or it's large. You could say big or large. They mean the same thing. Number nine. Tell me about the questions in your English book. Are they difficult? Make sure you said they. No, they aren't. They're easy. Did you get all of those? They uh, aren't there. Okay. It can be tricky if you're not paying attention. Okay. Tell me about Santa Claus. Is he thin? No, he isn't. He's heavy. Or fat. Both would be correct. Okay, good. All right. Let's move on to the next page now. So now we have this one. Okay, so now we're taking the same ideas we've been practicing and taking them maybe just, just a little step further, having to work on our critical thinking just a little bit more. We have up here a blue box. He isn't, she isn't, it isn't. And then it says they aren't. For the record, it should also say, we aren't, you aren't. I'm not sure why they would take we and you out of that. I mean, I think it's probably because that doesn't appear in this worksheet, but it's worth reviewing because it's all part of the same rule. So they aren't, you aren't, we aren't. Okay? So, the qu at the top it says, what's wrong? So in each one of these, uh, we're going to give a sentence, and it's wrong, okay? So what they first say is wrong, and we have to fix it. Okay, so for example, we have this car that's very beat up. Look at that. It's all dented and messed up, and it says it's new, okay? That's wrong. That's what we're practicing here. And this is a little different different than we have done in other worksheets before this. They don't usually have something written down here that's wrong. So you have to think and fix it, okay? So we have to say, it isn't new. It's old. Get it? So up here they said, it's new. We say, it isn't new, okay? It's old. So we're using the same things we've already just been practicing in the other ex exercise, but in a little bit of a different way, okay? So, for example, let's go on to this next one. It says, they're quiet. That's wrong. So what should we say? Over here, we said, it isn't new. So what do we say here? OK, 
Okay, can you figure it out, or do you need a little help? Okay, we'd say they aren't quiet. And then what goes here? I already gave you half the answer. You find the other half. They are quiet. What are they? Over here we said it's old. What do we say about them? We know that word. Go feel free to look back at the earlier lessons where we went over our, our vocabulary. If you don't remember, what's the opposite of quiet? Okay, so you're going to want to do that, and then you're going to want to do this one, which we have scrambled sentences. Unscramble the questions, begin each question with a capital letter. So here they have some words, but the words are out of order. So they gave you busy you are, and you have to fix it to say, are you busy? Okay, pretty clear? So this one, dog your large is, how do we move those around to get a question? And make sure you remember to put a capital letter at the beginning of every question. Make sure you remember to begin every sentence with a capital. We are going to keep coming home to that. Okay, because I want to make sure we get that. That's a very fixable problem. Okay, so do those two, and then when you're done, come back to me, and I will go over the answers with you. Go ahead and pause now, and we'll take another sip of my delicious coffee. Take this time to do the worksheet. Alright, did you pause the worksheet, pause the video, and do the worksheet? Great, let's go over the answers. So, number two. They're quiet. They aren't quiet. They're noisy. Number three. It's large. Is it large? No. It isn't large, period. It's small or little, period. Number four. He's single. He isn't single. He's married. Number five, she's young. She isn't young, she's old. Number six, they're short. They aren't short, they're tall. Okay, make sure you got periods there at the end of every one of your sentences, okay? Don't forget your periods. Okay, now scrambled sentences. Okay. Is your dog large? Make sure you put a capital I on his. Are they married? Make sure you have a capital A on R. Am I beautiful? Is English difficult? Is their car new? Is she tall or short? Or you could also say, is she short or tall? That would also work. Is he noisy or quiet? And again, you can switch that. Is he quiet or noisy? That also works. Make sure that you put a capital letter at the beginning of each one of those sentences. All right, you all done? Good work. I will see you at the next video.